welcome to this episode of the How to Choose. Hey, okay, here we go. Hi, <laughs> welcome to this episode of the How to Choose Happiness and Freedom Show. Life is supposed to be fun. I bet you have been to a lot of workshops and lectures and seminars trying to learn how to be more successful and how to have a happier life. But have you ever attended a play shop? I'm Lauren Foster, happiness coach and founder of Be Happy First, and I want to tell you about our brand new How to Have Anything You Want journaling play shop. It will take you less than 30 minutes to watch the videos. Let's see. I'm going to adjust this video, this audio here. Tammy, thank you. You know what? Let's try a different one. How's this? Is this better? Better or worse? Softer? Louder? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, the, this is what happens with live video. Technology does its thing. And in accordance with today's lesson, this could be the very best thing that ever happened to any of us. So, um, I will wait to see what Tammy says about the volume before we go on. So, you know what? I'll just tell you what I was going to tell you. So, again, we have created a brand new How to Have Anything You Want journaling play shop. And it will take you less than 30 minutes to watch the videos or listen to the audios, download the playbook, download the cheat sheet, and get started learning five simple habits that if you do these every day for 30 days, I guarantee that you will see a difference in your life. And if you don't, I want to know why. So my friend and student Mandy um, was you know helping me to review these materials and she went and watched these videos last night and had the best sleep she has ever had in her life and she woke up feeling amazing this morning and this is you know a thing that's recurred with her she she's not a morning person she wakes up icky and possibly totally other subject health wise that she wasn't sleeping well but she set her intentions to have a great night's sleep to have good dreams and to wake up feeling rested and refreshed and she did so th this is miracle making stuff people and it, it doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take a lot of money. All it takes is your decision to do this every single day and construct your days the way you want to construct them. So don't wait. Get started. Um, there's a link in the video or you can go to, if you're just listening, behappyfirst.org forward slash journal playbook. And this is a completely free play shop and I guarantee you're going to love it. So, all right. Um, Intention and attention is our topic for this month, and today's topic is let's wait and see. If you stand far enough back, any situation, no matter how dire and tragic and horrible it seems at the time, will have a positive outcome. Even wildfires, as tragic and, and terrifying as they are, they create amazing changes in the ecology of the area in which they take place. Um, you know, tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis, all of these natural events that we really can't do anything about are going to keep happening and we can't stop that. But we, what we can do is manage our perspective about those things and choose how we're going to look at them. Now, I shared with you already, good morning, Alicia. Um, the, the experience that I had while I was manifesting this home, this um, beautiful place that I live. So here's the thing that's happening. There's the, the neighbor's dog gets loose and he jumps up and pokes his head through the kitty cat doors that are in my windows. So that's, um, that's what's happening now. I don't know what's going to make it stop. Shush, right Again, working from home, live video. This is what happens. Okay, so. It's, now the neighbor is out in the yard chasing down her dog, so. <laughs> Comical. I don't know what we'll do with this video. Okay, that's enough. Come here. Come here. Come here. Lay down. Stop working. Stop. Okay. All right, so. All of these things that are happening, including my barking dog, which I should be able to do something about it. <laughs> ah. 
but I don't. So we're just going to have to carry on and see what we see. Come here. Come here. Good boy. Shush. Okay. All right. Maybe if I hold on to him or hold his mouth shut, he'll stop barking. All right. So what we're going to talk about today is the concept of let's wait and see, of teaching yourself to be able to step back and to choose how you're going to respond to anything. So, oh, I know where I was. I was telling you about before how when I was manifesting this place, I found a place that I thought was the one and it didn't work out. And that wound up being the greatest gift because something even better was in store for me. So looking back, I can see how all of that played itself out. And I can do this over my whole life. I had kind of had a pattern of beating myself up because I thought I never succeeded at things. I thought I never stuck to things. I thought I didn't have any follow through. And so I would go from job to job and boyfriend to boyfriend and, and you know, place to place moving around trying to get things to happen now when I look back I can see how each and every one of the mistakes that I made or the the choices that seemed like not good choices at the time or things that seemed to be happening to me actually work out to be awesome there's there's nothing that ever happened that I didn't learn something that I get to bring into my current life and so teaching yourself to be able to step back and assume that everything's going to work out. Everything's going to work out for my greatest good, no matter how dismal things look in the moment. So I want to tell you the story that never ends. That was first told to me by my meditation guru, David G. He's amazing. You should go look at him. Um, but the story goes like this. So there was a farmer way back in olden times. And this farmer had a, a beloved son that he just loved very much as fathers love their sons. And he also had a mare. And she was so vital to his life that he loved her almost as much as he loved his son. So everything that happened on his farm, all of the work that he did, he really needed her for. He needed, she was an, a, a very important resource for him. So one day, the beloved son accidentally left the barn door open and the beloved mare escaped. Well, the whole community rushed to the farmer's door full of sympathy, like, oh my goodness, this is such a terrible thing that's happened to you. What will you do? And the farmer, being wise, being a responder, being a person who could stand back and look at the bigger picture said, let's wait and see. Well, the next day, the mare came back and she was followed by four magnificent wild stallions. And th this was wealth that was unimagined in this village. And so the whole community rushed to the farmer's door and said, what great fortune you have had. You are so lucky and so fortunate that these four magnificent stallions have arrived at your farm. And the farmer said, well, let's just wait and see. So the next day, the beloved son was working with the four stallions, trying to break them and make them useful to the farm when one of them threw him and broke his leg. Now, broken leg, remember, this is olden times. So a broken leg was a really big deal and really horrible. And so the, the community rushed to the farmer's door and said, oh, we are so sorry for all of for your misfortune. It's so, it's so terrible that your son broke his leg. And the farmer said, let's wait and see. You, you begin to see how this is going to be a story that never ends, right? <laughs> all right, so the next day, the king's army came to the community recruiting all able-bodied men for a mission that was guaranteed to be deadly. We're not going to win this war, but we have no choice but to go and fight it, and you must give us all of your able-bodied young men to go and fight. Well, the community rushed to the farmer's store and said, oh, you are so lucky that you didn't have to give up your son to this lost cause, to this war, because of his broken leg. And the farmer said, well, let's wait and see. Well, it turns out that it wasn't a doomed mission after all that it was highly, highly successful, and the warriors got lots of treasure, like a thousand gold coins each, and this was unheard of wealth for everyone in the community, except for the farmer and his son, because they had a broken leg. And so the community rushed to the farmer's door and said, oh, this is so tragic. We're so sorry that you missed out on all of these riches because of your son's broken leg. And the farmer said, let's wait and see. So that night, 
burglars who had heard of the newfound wealth of this community came and they robbed all of the homes that had the thousand gold coins and they murdered all of the people there. And so the few townspeople that were left came to the farmer's door and said, you're so lucky you didn't get murdered because you didn't get a thousand coins because your son had a broken leg because of the, so you see how this is a story that will never end. We could keep making things up and going on and on and on and on, but nothing is good or bad until you say it is. Nothing has a connotation of right or wrong until you say it does. So this is where you get the ability to choose. And if you can teach yourself to approach every moment of your life like this, to go, you know what? Okay, my website broke. Okay, um, a pandemic came and cut off my income. Um, th there's a war, there's a hurricane, there's a tornado. If you can stop and stand back and give yourself a moment to choose what your response is, then you can maybe choose to say, this is probably going to work out okay. I was having a conversation yesterday. I, I won't say with whom it was, but if you're listening, you'll recognize yourself. And she said, the economy is just going to go to crap after this. And I went, what? How could you possibly know that? And she's like, oh, well, I guess I don't. I'm like, so how about if we just wait and see? Because it's just as likely that the economy is going to do amazing things after this. You, you, you just cannot predict the future. And so why assume that things are going to work out bad? And in the same conversation, she said, real estate, the real estate market is going to suck. And then, then she caught herself. She went, wait a minute. Okay. So maybe it won't. Maybe the real estate market will be amazing. So maybe things will continue to go horrible, but they are just as likely. In fact, they're more likely to go amazing, to improve. Human beings are amazing and adaptable. And we have every resource to be able to figure out how to take this whole current situation and turn it into something beautiful to make our businesses better, to close businesses that didn't survive and open new ones that will be better, to, you know, learn to appreciate life more, to all the, the, the ways that we can thrive and benefit from everything that is happening are limitless, just like the universe. So choose your response. Now, so the, the final message today is that one of the best ways to teach yourself how to choose your response is to have a strong meditation practice. So I started this show off talking about David G, my meditation teacher, and he recommends that you meditate 30 minutes every morning and every night. And that's an amazing goal, but even five minutes in the morning, when you decide, you make up your mind that you're going to spend five minutes only thinking about your breath, only thinking about a mantra, only listening to the sound of birds, only listening to a guided meditation, doing something where you are consciously directing your mind and teaching your mind that you're the boss, that we don't have to react to things as victims of circumstance. We can choose to respond to things as conscious co-creators with the universe so that we put in the link to the meditate side there's two free meditations there that you can go and look at that's bfefirst.org forward slash meditate so go there and try it out and see if you don't instantly just feel a little bit better and more relaxed just by spending 15 minutes in stillness and silence and connecting with yourself and with your higher power so all right, that's our class for today. We're going to come back on Thursday and talk some more about the whole concept of let's wait and see. We're going to build in the principle of wouldn't it be nice and getting yourself into a feeling place of accepting all of the things that the universe has already delivered to you. You have been asking and asking and asking and asking your, your whole life through all of your thoughts and the universe has been delivering more than you could ever appreciate in your whole entire life. So now it's time to get you into the, the work, the play of getting yourself in the feeling place of receiving all of those things. And you will think that it's magic the way good things start to show up in your life when you do when you engage in these principles. All right. So thanks for being here with me. Um, 
I will look forward to seeing you on Thursday, same time, same place, 1130 Eastern Time on the Be Happy First page. Be sure to like this page so that you can be kept up to date as to when new things are coming out. And I'm looking forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, remember that happiness is a choice and you can always choose to be happy first. I'll see you Thursday.